It's super important that I create the space that people can be vulnerable, be honest, and support one another in our working mom job. Before I jump into the podcast, I'd like to take a minute to thank my sponsor, KED Styled. Christy Eller DeBoer is a personal stylist and wardrobe consultant who works with clients to help them shine from the inside out. Her concierge customization services assist clients in identifying their personal style while taking the guesswork out of what to wear. Her results provide clients with comfort and confidence in themselves and their wardrobes. When you look good, you feel good. Check out KED Styled online at kedstyled.com. You can also find her on social media at KED Styled. Welcome to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast, a weekly podcast providing career and creative inspiration to help you build a purpose-filled life. If you're interested in tapping into your creative potential, pursuing a career with passion, and building on your biggest and best resource, yourself, please join me on this path. I'm your host, Nancy Moore, and I want you to know that I'm on this journey with you. So let's get started. Hi, everybody. So this is my second interview with somebody in a short amount of time. And the reason for that is because I met Danielle Melton at Alt Summit. So I recorded a podcast wrapping up and talking about Alt Summit with Danielle. And then I wanted to have her back so she could talk about her uh, platform, which is being a working mom. And she is the founder of Motherboard. And Motherboard is an online community of supportive, dynamic and driven moms. Following its inception, this organization, it's rooted in Tulsa, quickly gained momentum among working moms across the globe. Part of the appeal of this organization is being a part of a supportive community and the access to resources it provides to help working moms curb burnout and truly thrive. In addition to starting Motherboard, Danielle has written a goal-setting workbook and is also very active in the foster care community. And she also has a component that is a nonprofit to Motherboard that she will also discuss. So she has a lot of amazing things going on. So I can't wait for you to hear this conversation with Danielle. So Danielle Melton, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Nancy, once again. I know, once again, (laughs) this is the second time. So we actually met in Palm Springs at Alt Summit, which was super cool. I invited you. We did a kind of a live version on Instagram. We talked about it, and then I shared that podcast so people could learn more about Alt Summit. It was a really cool way to meet for us both being in Tulsa. (laughs) So uh, you were a speaker at Alt Summit, and that's how I kind of got to know you in your platform. It's called Motherboard. And so I invited you because I wanted people to learn more about what Motherboard is. And so I thought, who better to talk about Motherboard than you? So if you'll kind of tell us a little bit about what it is and and also why you decided to start this. Yes. But first off, I just want to say, Nancy, you're just such a phenomenal person. It was just so nice to meet you at Alt Summit because like for us little Okies to go all the way to Palm Springs and get connected there, it's just crazy how, you know, the universe happens and works. So when it comes to Motherboard, it's so interesting because I have a whole journey about it, but Motherboard is our framework and our cohesiveness when it, around working mothers. So basically we help support, level up, and give resources to moms and the workplaces they you know, work for to help basically create like a really good environment in the workplace for mothers. And then moms have those tools and resources needed to basically thrive as a working mom. So um, started it literally years ago, like right at the pandemic in 2020. And um, yeah, we kind of expanded from there. 
Okay. So what kind of prompted you to start Motherboard? Yes. So my background is in executive leadership in education. So I've held so many different positions from like school directors and principals to director of operations of a whole school district to even like teaching at the university level. You know, my goal and everything to really like head towards like higher positions and higher education. Um, during that time, I actually entered into parenthood in a non-traditional way, which was through foster. And so becoming a parent all of a sudden and still trying to show up at work, you know, with everything, with my all, which was not possible anymore, it was just really difficult. And I found myself really overwhelmed, stressed, and burned out. And literally to the point where it landed me in urgent care. It landed me in urgent care. I needed a doctor's note because I just felt like I was going to have a mental breakdown trying to balance it all, which was, you know, it's impossible. But, you know, full balance is totally impossible. So basically what I found was, you know, during my time of, you know, absence, it was three days, I did some research. I'm like, what am I feeling? Why do I feel numb? Why do I feel overwhelmed? Why can't I be the best version of myself in everything like I was doing before? And I found out it was called burnout. And further looking into things, I found out that most moms were burned out, especially working moms. That, you know, it's a huge report about it. And basically I was saying, okay, so I need something for me. I need community. I need resources. I need something for me so I feel like I can thrive as a working mom. And looking at the research, it looks like many other working moms are having this issue as well. So let me create a solution since I wasn't able to find anything out there that focuses on working mothers. Granted, I did find groups and things that focused on the kids, which is great. I mean, if you want to learn how to add broccoli to brownies, that's wonderful. But I needed me as a mother to be mothered. I needed support for me. And when I wasn't able to find that, that's when I created a motherboard for that. So we started off with the name Boss Mom Crew and um, evolved to the name Motherboard. And for those who may not know, motherboard, the whole definition of a motherboard is the center of a computer and nothing functions outside of it if the motherboard is not intact. So that is kind of our whole vision and mission is to make sure the mom is intact, being the best version of ourselves, you know, and so that she can basically thrive everywhere else as a mother, wife, friend, you know, colleague, all the things. So mm -hmm. it's interesting because perspective you didn't have the perspective of um you know having a a child and trying to do all that you were doing yeah. and so to try to be able to handle all of it or juggle all of it is just it is a lot it is and I, again like I, I wasn't aware even with my degree in early childhood education it's so funny because my family would always say, oh, once you get your little, your own kids is different. And I'm like, no, because research says, you know, and doing all the educational lingo and things like that. But um, they were 100% right. When you go into motherhood and parenthood, it is a huge shift. And a lot of people don't talk about that shift. You often lose who you are. You kind of like, yeah, lose yourself in motherhood and, you know, trying to function and figure life out as you're not all about you anymore. Like you're giving your all to someone else and it can be difficult. And I was just having the time figuring out like, how am, how are others doing well? Everybody seemed like they're pot prospering. You know, am I the only one with this issue feeling like a failure? And um, come to find out a lot of people know how to smile really great at, on the outside and um, on the inside or in, within the home, like they're really struggling. Mm -hmm. So it's super important that I create this space that people can be vulnerable, be honest, and support one another in our working mom journey. Mm -hmm. And obviously it, it took off like wildfire because there are literally thousands <laughs> of moms who, who are a part of this yes. Um, yes. community. And so if you want to talk a little bit about uh, maybe the resources that you offer mm -hmm. For people because I know that that's a big help yeah. to these working moms yes so with motherboard there are two pieces to it so we have motherboard which is like our corporate solutions and basically the training and resources to basically be thrive as a working mom 
um, we, that's given to mothers and if, you know, individually and if a, a company wants to add us as a benefit piece, which were added in benefit packages, we can add that addition to, you know, different businesses. And then the other side is Motherboard Foundation, which is like the community in person, like that piece, which is really, really important because a lot of moms are saying that they feel lonely in motherhood and, you know, don't feel like they're supported by their community. So basically, I'm creating the community with Motherboard Foundation, which is our nonprofit arm of Motherboard. Basically, both you have different types of resources, more so the um, foundation is more one-on-one, more, you know, I learn from you, you learn from me, we'll have like different, you know, panels, in-person things for the community to be part of. And when it comes to the, the Motherboard, which is our business and self-development solution, we have different resources such as like our webinars, which are led by industry experts that are vetted through us on different topics that help working mothers thrive so they won't be burned out, such as, you know, letting go of the superwoman syndrome or how to delegate or how to add self-care in the mornings if you only have like 10, 15 minutes. So different tools and resources like that. And then we also have our discounts and deal marketplace. So we have a lot of different companies on there that are supporting our mothers that they'll get discounts to. Um, and then just other resources that we provide. Also, we do have like a lot of wellness. So wellness is a huge piece. So focusing on the mom's well-being is, is vital. So one of the things we have is we're looking at financial wellness. We're looking at, you know, physical, mental wellness. So just all those little pieces that we like to give so moms can have those tools and resources literally in their working mom toolbox so that they can thrive and not survive as a working mom so yeah yeah a lot of little pieces to it that's really cool that you said thrive and not just survive but thrive yes. because you when you're thriving and you're doing well everybody in your family and and friends and everybody else mm -hmm. just benefits from that so it's just nice to have you know, that kind of mindset. Yes. And it's interesting too, when you were talking about women or moms feeling they're like they're isolated or alone. And I remember, I remember so clearly feeling like that and having a little baby and just even, even, you know, a baby and a toddler and mm -hmm. kids at different stages. I mean, it just yeah. hits you differently at different stages about just how hard parenthood is. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the most rewarding thing I've ever yeah. done, but it's the hardest thing it I've is. ever done. And one of the things I want to point out is this could, this is also true for those with spouses. So we could still feel lonely as a mother and we can still have a great spouse, but a lot of times we are the default parent. And so that makes things a little bit more difficult because, you know, although we have a great spouse, you know, that, that could be still a challenge because he still wouldn't understand the, the working mom journey. I know I spoke to my husband a couple of times about things and he's like, oh, okay. Like, you know, he's trying to be supportive, but I'm like, oh, never mind. You don't understand. <laughs> it's okay. I love you, but um, I need to talk to another mom who's doing the same kind of thing to understand what that looks like. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, and then going back to what you were saying about the thriving and not surviving. So the, the reason I came up with that term is because I've heard so many women who are, you know, older, who have adult children, when they learn about what we're doing at Motherboard, they're, they're like, where was this when I was raising kids? You know, like I... I've had people even say like, you know, I was just trying to figure out when they turned 18 because it was so difficult. And they said, looking back, they wish they would have had more time and not just feel like they're in survival mode. Like I got to work, I got to do this, I got to do that. Okay. You know, so they couldn't really enjoy being a mom. And we're wanting to create that space where you can enjoy being a mom. You can enjoy, you know, going for your careers. You can Enjoy both, but it's just a way to do it so you don't feel overwhelmed. And mm -hmm. the biggest piece is putting yourself first for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is us in Tulsa, I know you do some events yeah. um, for us here in Tulsa that are live in person. Mm -hmm. But even people who are in Tulsa that just can't get there because you know, they don't have a sitter or they don't have whatever, you uh, have an option to where people can can view things that you're doing online yeah. and that connects people you know so that's fantastic one of the events that i attended with you i remember you setting it up mm -hmm. your laptop so people who weren't able to attend in person could watch online and i thought that still fosters that 
yeah. you know, sense of connection and that community. And it's so funny. I'm glad you mentioned that. So a lot of things that we have evolved from is listening to the community. So starting from Instagram, people are like, we want to do in-person things. Okay, so then we move to in-person things. And we start doing like networking events, you know, every, every month. And then they're like, can we like create a space where like, not just so many different people are coming, but we can create relationships with people. And then that's where the chapters came. So we leveled up and had national chapters. Um, and then that was, you know, with us having a small team, that was a little bit more difficult to manage in, in that regard. So we put out another survey asking kind of like, you know, what are the chapters doing? And a lot of times people were saying that it was really difficult for people to come to things all the time. Like they, they're paying for the you know subscription, they're doing this, but they're not able to come to the in-person. So that made us evolve once again and did like mostly virtual and digital offerings with that. So Motherboard now is like a digital platform for the support of working moms. And you know, and when we have our in-person events, we do try to think of all the types of ways we need to accommodate. So whether it's, you know, making sure we have people who can join virtually or when we have alcoholic beverages also having a non-alcoholic option you know vegetarian option things like that so we're making sure they're being very intentional on how we can support our community because we all know it's it could be difficult to pull away from certain things so we don't want that to be a reason why people don't join us and be fed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay I'm yeah I'm glad you mentioned that because I felt like you did a good job being inclusive Yay, of you. everybody there um, yes. and yeah it was a fabulous event okay so you have written a book that is a, about goal setting and that's one of my favorite yes. topics and <laughs> that is hard for a lot of people well including myself and it's called ready set goal setting and so I wanted you to kind of talk about the importance of goal setting and why you wrote this yes. book and and who it's helped okay so it's a workbook you guys um, so as I was mentioning in the beginning I was severely burnt out like I felt like I was not surviving I felt like everything was like out of my control and I just felt like I had no control of anything and that wasn't making me feel good like I felt like the month was taking over me and I had no nothing to say or give into the month and I had to take a step back and figure out how do I fix this how do I start living again and not just be on survival mode like like I'm me like I'm a person I should be able to have some choices and things like that so with that I did a little bit of you know trying to set some goals and try to figure things out and from a lot of my tools and resources that helped me to diminish burnout and feel more confident in my month I created the workbook, which helps, you know, it's literally what I use to guide my month every month. And um, part of being part of the motherboard, when you're a part of the, the subscription membership, we would do our goal setting workshop once a month. And basically what it was, was a downloadable PDF we went through every month. It's just like a one pager. And, you know, just kind of going over like how, like looking at the past, looking at where we want to be so questions such as reflecting the last month what did you find your biggest challenge when it comes to your career when it came to being a mother when it came to yourself like self-care and stuff and then what do you want to be true for the upcoming month so we look at the past the present and the future so we can kind of talk to our future selves and when it comes to things that we can change and we do have control over we basically will be able to create those things and create our mindset around what we can control so mindset is everything y'all <laughs> mindset is totally everything so one of the things in the goal setting is like what's your word of the month or where you know how do you want to feel this month and with that in mind okay what do you need to put in place to make sure those feelings happen so it's more so creating that mindset and the ecosystem around how you want to feel and with that in mind, what do we need to let go? What do we need to you know, focus on so we can keep that feeling and, and move forward with that? So yeah, so all that came from my, my mind, came from a one pager and I said, you know what, let me just keep going. So with the one pager framework, I'm going to create a workbook that has 12 months of that same one pager in there with you know a couple informations in between such as like really good motivational quotes and stuff like that. So. Um, got some really good feedback. People who already, who already were part of the goal setting love the workbook because 
it's a it's a full workbook you can write in it and we also have like the pdf digital version when you buy it you get access to both and um, access to our goal setting workshop so that are in person monthly they're actually are not person yeah, yeah they're online thank you. monthly mm -hmm. so yeah and then we try to bring a guest on once a month we're actually implementing that in the next month where we'll find someone who are doing really great things in the world but then bring them on for 15 minutes and say hey tell us about your goal setting what what's going well with you how do you set your mind to do goals what are like some good takeaways and just kind of having them to start you know getting us pumped to go over the goal setting workbook so okay. yeah it's yeah really cool. i i am with you on mindset is everything oh my you God. know and setting your intentions and if you don't have something nailed down like your own goals i feel like you're susceptible to just blowing with the wind and so whoever nice. you know different things that come up and and yeah. people that need your time mm -hmm. that you're like okay when you maybe would have said no you know worked on something that would have benefited you exactly. you know towards that goal exactly. and so and one of the things i like to tell people is like once we figure out what our goals are and what what we want to focus on we kind of have to be disrespectful to the distractions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times things will come like, hey, Susan, there's this conference, would you like to go? And instead of saying yes, think about it and say, hmm, is that going towards the goal of me making partner? No, it's not. So maybe we should give that to Sally because we wanna keep our goals focused on what we're wanting to go and do and be. So, and, and really big on delegating and you know figuring all that out because Again, we can grab so many things. A lot of times we have a hard time saying no. A lot of times we think our plates can add more and then we are then going back into that cycle of getting burned out, being overwhelmed, no self-care, our cups are empty and things like that. So it's super important to really, you know, be disrespectful to the distractions and really hone in on what the goal is. I've never heard that before. Be disrespectful to the distractions. Yes. <gasps> Dr. Nikki, um, she is great and has said that quote, and I love, I love, love, love that. So, um, yes, Dr. Nikki is amazing. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So thank you for sharing about that. And I think when we do a live mm -hmm. visit after this podcast drops, I'm going to show people the book and we can talk about it a little yes. bit more of that because yes. I, I have a book and I think it's really helpful and really cool. So yes. Okay. So one thing that you mentioned in the beginning, you were talking about um, being a mom and becoming a mom quickly. And I wanted people to kind of understand your heart for foster care and, you know, kind of how that came yeah. about. Okay. Yes. So yes. my husband and I decided to foster since 2016. Um, and the reason for that is my parents were foster parents. And so we grew up with foster siblings and just to see how they poured into the children and how they treated them literally like our own, like they go to out of state with us, they go to weddings, like, you know, they're really part of the family. It's just so good to be able to see that. And like, we're still connected to many of our old foster kiddos or siblings to this day. And ever since I was little, even before my parents started fostering, I told myself I wanted to adopt as well i said i want to give back to the community this is i'm like 10 years old i want to adopt because if there's children out there that need a home like i would like to do that you know either way if i have biological kids or not like adoption was something i wanted to do so 2016 happened i'm telling my husband hey i want to foster and to be quite honest he was like i don't know anything about that and was kind of taken aback and uh kind of kind of encourage him and tell him you know what the great things are to foster and things like that so once we started taking the classes he was like on board he was super excited he was on board we were ready to go and um super excited for our first placements we had two boys no kids beforehand we had two boys six and like ten so yeah so our first placement we had our kids we were really excited and then it just kind of smacked me that oh my gosh i have to get up early i have to cook I have to oh goodness like I'm tired like so it was almost like night and day and these weren't even little tiny kids and just to remind you I it was my husband and I for years before that like before we became foster parents so you know we didn't have like 
a lot of nieces and nephews staying that we didn't have all that so it was a big overnight challenge that I had to almost say you know goodbye to my old self and hello to my new self of someone who has to take care of other people so anyway that's kind of where the burnout and all the things happen trying to figure all that out but um, since then I found my way I enjoyed fostering and since we started in 2016 we fostered over 30 children in Tulsa and we do focus on black and brown children because we found out that a lot of people are not wanting to foster our kiddos because of their hair you know so um, yeah so yeah we focus on black and brown children and there's not that many black and brown foster parents out there either so I do try to encourage others you know, to foster trying to get people to understand the whole goal of fostering and and things like that and the whole journey although it's challenging it's still very rewarding so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you uh have kennedy through that I do. yes our daughter kennedy was a foster kiddo who unfortunately wasn't able to be re reunified with her birth mom and we were the family that i guess been chosen through this whole process and you know she's phenomenal and we you know one thing we don't want to do is like delete her past life we still want to make sure that we're speaking to her about you know that and you know I think it's really important to have her in counseling not just her but all of our children who come to our home counseling is number one just because of like you know a lot of things that are that could be happening in their heads and you know with the trauma and stuff like that but she is phenomenal I love her to death like as my own and yeah, yeah, we it was like a, a beautiful gift to be able to support her and all of these other kids. So, geez, I let, thank you for sharing your heart for that because that's not something that I've ever done, and I've I've known people who have fostered and adopted, mm -hmm. and it's been so you know amazing and rewarding. So I do like to share that because yes. I know that platform's very important to you. So yes, yes, yes. yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, so. I would like to find out um, some time management tips from you because if people follow you on social media, and I'll include that information, it is amazing all that you have going on. And I know you're not even showing a fraction of what you're doing. You have a lot going on from traveling and speaking to, you know, your the... Um, motherboard that yes, you're doing yes. the in the nonprofit arm the events all the online part of it the resources talking to different corporations yes, businesses all yes. of that so <laughs> if, if you <laughs> like wow even saying all that but if you could share maybe your top couple of tips for time management that would maybe benefit others yes so it, it takes it takes a village like i can't say i'm doing all this on my own i have a phenomenal husband who picks up so much of the slack a lot of times and you know I, th I think it's really important to have people that you can lean on for a lot of things another thing is like my husband says you enjoy being busy so I like it I guess I, I said no I don't I like this you know relax you like no you busy is your is your thing like you enjoy it so I think I'm just built a little bit different as well so um, but a couple tips I would say is really starting the morning off really right and I'm not just saying that like I hear a lot of people like I'll oh, start the morning off you know get up at 5 a.m. and do that I, no I am not an early bird person but what I do is every time I wake up in the morning I give myself about 15 minutes to myself um, I speak like words of affirmation um, say what I want the day to look like I, I think it's really big on focusing on what you want instead of focusing on like the issues that got be in place so for example you know I could you could say, oh my gosh, this is going to be a super overwhelming day. I can't, I can't today. I'm not excited about it. Or you can say something like, wow, I have the privilege of having so many cool things happening today. I can't wait to see how much I am able to get done. You know, just something like that will help shift how you will literally move throughout the day. So that's, that's my um, second, the mind shift and how you speak to yourself waking up and just having 15 minutes I don't have much time so 15 minutes during that time and then um, one of the things I also like to do is like review my goals and just say like okay what do I want to get done today I'm a really to-do list person and I also have a done it list so that at the end of the day I can look at what I got accomplished instead of what I didn't again focusing on what I want focusing on the positive 
Because a lot of times, again, we have so much to do and we can so easily feel like we failed because we didn't get it all done. I mean, it's just the um, the part of the, the, the process. It's like, darn, I had 20 things, I only got 16 done. But instead say, wow, I got 16 done. Look at these cool 16 things. This is great. I can't wait for tomorrow. So the, whatever, you know, we had, we have a rollover for tomorrow. Mindset is really big. And setting your intention for the day. I like that. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. So in wrapping up, I have a theme that is grow more in 2024. Yes. So I'm wondering how you are growing either personally or professionally. Yes. So I feel like I'm growing both and with the same thing. And let me explain. So I am more focused on building my network of people and building true friendships around that. So one of the things I like to say is there's always room for us all and gatekeeping, like let's get rid of that and let's all work together towards a goal and like encourage each other and things like that. So one of the things I'm doing is like really trying to see what other people are doing, see how I can best support them and have this like mutual understanding and mutual mindset of really being encouraging for each other and helping each other just level up. So that's one thing is like meeting you, Nancy. Like I feel like I'm being a better person just being around you and just like your aura is just so positive and just makes me feel great leaving your presence. You know, cause I'm like, oh, I have my, my Nancy fix. So like just things like that is, is really important and making sure that I'm going around and meeting new people and doing things intentionally to basically grow my personal and professional tribe. Okay, good, I love that. And again, I do feel so blessed to have met you. So this, this is a fun connection, so yes. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. This has been a lot of fun and I know I'll have you back because there's so many more things we can talk so about, much. but um, I'm glad people know more about Motherboard and what you're about because it's phenomenal. So thanks for visiting with me thank about all that. You. This is great. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap on this week's episode. I want to thank you for listening to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast. It means the world to me, and I'd love to connect with you. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Sharing Passion and Purpose and Twitter at Passion Sharing. Also, if you like this podcast, it would mean a lot to me for you to subscribe, rate, and review it. And as always, all my show notes will be available on my website, sharingpassionandpurpose.com.